Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have the amazing, acclaimed singer-songwriter, Mary Cutter. But before we get to our interview with her, you have to check out these fabulous viral TikToks from the fabulous Mary Cutter. Right now, it's Hi, this is Wilman Zuyara, and once again, I am joined by my better half, Risa Binder, for another edition of Talent Talk. And today we are joined by the acclaimed singer-songwriter, boot-stomping queen, the one and only Mary Cutter. Mary, can everyone just take a look through the window at the top of her tree and just look at that star of dreams, aka a little Santa hat? We're all about the hat situations here. Mm -hmm. Mary, I love well. how unapologetic you are. You are fierce, you are ferocious, you are kind, you are funny, you are talented, and you're a light. And I have a lot more to say, but I'm going to give question number one to my better half, Risa Binder. Oh my gosh, you are my better half too, my friend. Um, I, Mary, Mary, um, meeting you truly changed my life in Nashville. I don't know if I've even said that to you, to your beautiful face, but I'm doing it now. Um, Mary, how in the world, you are the hardest working woman I think I've probably ever met. And I wanna know how you stay so inspired to literally, I believe you do about three rights a day every day. And that's not an exaggeration. Um, can you tell me like, do you keep a list of ideas, titles? How, how do you work? How? Well, give me some of that. <laughs> Risa, you are so kind. Will, you are so kind. Thank you guys for having me on your show. I just, you guys are incredible. Uh, and Risa, since we have met, I just feel like, literally, you're such a blessing not to get sappy. I literally could like drink coffee or hot chocolate, depending on the day with you for hours. Like, girl. <laughs> and, uh, that really means a lot to me that, you know, you even bring up, you know, working hard and stuff. You know, I, I guess whenever I moved to town, I saw how much talent there is. There's so much talent in Nashville, all over the world, but specifically here in town with singers and songwriters. And I mean, to stay inspired, I mean, it's the people I get to work with. You know, yes. every single writing room you walk into, you never know what you're gonna write. and. There's two songs that are going to be coming out, hopefully in the next year, and um, that I'm a writer on. Not that I'm an artist, I'm a writer on, where that morning, it's a rap song. And it is like basically somewhere between WAP and Old Town Road. Like right in the sweet spot, lyrically, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That afternoon, I went to a writing session and we wrote like the most life song ever. It's a country song. So like you just never know what you're gonna get into. And I think that just keeps the inspiration, the muse, whatever you wanna call it, alive. What I love so much about you, Mary, is that you're truly a vessel. I feel yeah. like you have built throughout your whole life this tool belt of tools that you then dependent on the assignment and the energy and the vibe, you will literally take them out and sometimes maybe combine them and sometimes maybe fuse three <laughs> or four. And at 30,000 feet, watching the landscape of what you've already created and what you are going to create, I'm curious to know, is there a genre of music that you haven't gone, that you haven't written for as much as you'd like? Ooh, absolutely. I actually do think, I mean, in the past, I guess the last couple months, I've been riding with more and more pop acts, which is obviously y'all, I'm from Kentucky and I mean, tiny, tiny town in Kentucky. I remember when we got McDonald's. So definitely the country roots are there, but there is something about, there's no boundaries. Literally, um, there's a song with a duo that's coming out in the next year um, that is called Breadcrumbs. 
Okay, like who would have thought breadcrumbs? And I had that title written in my phone since right before I moved to Nashville, guys. I had no idea. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, you manifested. I had no idea like what that would be. And we ended up turning it into this angsty love jam. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> but uh, I think that pop, there are no bounds. And what is pop? Honestly, it's yeah, well, I was about to say, I feel like with, and, you know, just to piggyback on that, I feel like already what you've done with your career, Mary, in such a short amount of time is you have shown, not told, but shown the world that you really are a boundless talent. Mm. Thank you That's so much. That means a lot. On. That's a title, boundless. Sorry, putting that away that for something. Is, keep going. Can we please write that? Just like yeah. write that. And that is a great title. <laughs> keep Not going. Gonna lie. I think it's. Well, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a Disney animated short musical film. Boundless. I will direct manifest you. Manifest that. Mary, you will write, and maybe Risa will be the voice. I'm just putting that out there. I'm not there yet, manifest but I am. That. Can I have the hat <laughs> off the tree, please? Anyway, yes. Risa. <laughs> Mira, you are such a light. I can't with I you, Risa. You have, I know Did you have I. a request for my love. You know, I, I know you a, a little bit, and, and uh, you know, I love spending time chatting with you, but I want you to tell our Talent Talk community what brought you to Magical Nashville, like your story mm. of what led you to choose this life to do this every day. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I think about it sometimes, and it it's kind of frightening how like one decision can totally put a fork in the road of your life. So like I said, I grew up in very small town, Kentucky, and you know, I would sing at different fairs and different festivals, but for whatever reason, like Nashville might as well have been Mars. It never even crossed my mind <laughs> to go to Nashville or New York or Ella. It just did it. And um, I met this feller uh, who owned uh, two radio stations and a TV station right outside of Louisville, Kentucky. And we met backstage at a show I was performing at. And long story short, he wanted to start a weekly music variety show. And he wanted an entertainer to host it. And so he called me up, asked me to come to his office, offer me this job. And I had no experience, guys. Like maybe I've been like on a radio show maybe once before to plug a festival or something, but never in a million years would I have thought that I would be hosting a show. So kudos to you all. Like seriously, I know there's so much work that goes into it, preparing the questions, picking up the guests, editing, like all the different pieces and, you know, making it fun too. And anyway, to go a little bit faster in the story, uh, I started hosting the show and uh, we would have different artists on radio tour come on the show and we had big writers as well. And uh, one day I was interviewing this fella named Kim Williams and he wrote like, oh my gosh, probably half the hits in the nineties. I mean, no lie. He was basically what Shane McAnally is now. He was in the nineties, early 2K, huge writer. And Garth he Brooks. was on the show, <laughs> Garth Brooks. Yes, Every he wrote time. Garth, Reba, George Strait, George Jones, like literally like Every single country act, basically. Yeah. Anyway, uh, off air, he we were talking. He found out I did music, and he hands me his guitar, and he's like, "Play me something." And I had dabbled a little bit in songwriting in my bedroom. Had never co-written, but I played <laughs> him some songs, and he liked it. And he gave me a list of writers that he was friends with downtown to call up, and he said, "You ask them to either get coffee or be on your show or write with you." And looking back now. I see what a huge, huge deal, you know, that is, you know, and um, man, like, I know, like, doors open for me that I cannot have opened myself for sure. And one thing led to another, you know, this to Risa and Will, you know, this as well, you work with someone and then they say, oh, you need to work with my buddy, Billy Bob. And then you're right with Billy Bob and Billy Bob's like, oh, you need to meet Sally. And before I knew it, I was down here all the time riding and it just kind of, led from one thing to another but if I had never done that show or ever done that festival where I met the station owner probably wouldn't be here and I think that's a testament to who you are Mary and I think also it's a lesson for all artists let alone all people out there 
that to sometimes lean into the fear and just say yes can open so many doors. Even if you may not see the light at the end of the tunnel, there may not even be a tunnel there, but it's taking that leap of faith and going with your gut. And Mary, thank goodness you did that show, but also thank goodness you followed that, you know, that gentleman's advice and just kept saying yes and leaning in. And, you know, listen, I know we both have so many more questions for you, but, you know, there's one question in particular, Mary, we've been waiting all but 11 minutes to ask you. Ask away. Are you sure? Please. Mary Cutter, are you ready for game time? I am so ready for game time. Well, Mary Cutter, today is your lucky day because today's game is the questions game. Risa has a book in Nashville. She stole it from me. No, I'm just kidding. I lost mine. <laughs> so Risa, tell Mary what the game's all about. Mary, you're going to pick maybe like two of your favorite numbers and tell us what the significance of them are. And I'm going to ask you questions in this book based on the number you tell me. So what is your first lucky number? Um, probably three. Ooh, why? Oh, uh, I really, well, this is a very strange fact, but I really like odd numbers. That's oh. amazing. I, I, I just that. really love odd numbers. It's a strange thing, but you no, know. No, it isn't. It's perfect. Like oh. side note, guys, I just have to tell you this. So I've what, been recently <laughs> getting into sewing and I've been sewing sequins, hand embroidery on this jacket. There could be no like two or four it had to be like three five or one period anyway whoa are you the same way with getting gasoline in the car like it has to land on an odd number like the whole i really what? like odd numbers Risa. it's a very strange thing <laughs> my husband my husband's that way with even numbers i'm like just fill up the car he's like it has to be like eight 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 oh, oh, see, okay. i need mine at zero at, on the guess i need it at zero i need it to be clean zero or i have a panic attack but that's for I me love my that, though. You like it clean I need a clean zero, zero. Risa, go. Here's number three. Oh, we are. Okay, question three is, you are, woo, you are gifted enough money to build a vacation home anywhere you want, but mm. it becomes, oh, this, yeah, it becomes the only place you can vacation from now on. Where do you build it, Mary Cutter? I mean, Oh, wow. That is a really tough That's an aggressive That's a really, question. It is. That is. I mean, like, immediately, if I, as a good daughter, I would say Kentucky so I could visit my parents. But we're talking vacation, aren't we? <laughs> I think I would have to say me some Hawaii. Oh, some Aloha sunsets happening, you know? <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> okay. And next, next, next number would be what? Let's do, um, ooh, ooh. How high does it go? 300 it goes to 300 oh man let's get 299 Ooh. oh i love you okay i haven't even done that number yet let's find out <laughs> okay 299 is what is the oldest thing you own oh man Woof. let me see here um you know what this is really bizarre but i had this tank top in my drawer i saw it earlier when i was doing uh laundry and I remember in middle school, I went to go spend the night with my friend Marisha. And I just thought she was like a cool, she was a cool kid. You know, she was definitely my yeah. cool friend. I was not that, and I, you know, I have friends, but I wasn't like the cool kid at school. And um, I remember I, I had spilled something on my clothes or something and she had loaned me her tank top. And it's just battered and worn now. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I still have it because it's like memories of hanging out with Marisha. She didn't ask for a back. No, no. <laughs> Do an answer middle school. It'd be I like that it. sometimes. <laughs> well, that was fun, Mary. And before we have you maybe sing a little something for us, I have a question for you. Go for um, it. When I was researching you and just witnessing you today, I'm looking at not only a ferocious talent, but I'm looking at a young woman who's obviously done the work on herself and her craft. And so I'm just curious and have been wondering for the past week to ask you, if you could give your younger self any advice and or the young Marys out there, any advice, 
what would it be? Ooh, that's a really good question. Man, like, I would say just truly just just go for things. Don't worry about what other people think. Put on the blinders, especially this year. I've really worked on putting on the blinders, um, just focusing on the work ahead of you. You know, I mean, obviously, opinions are important and stuff, but be true to yourself and just work hard, you know, and um, I think, you know, the more we do that, the happier our lives are. Amen. <sighs> Amen. I love that so much. And I mean, I truly could talk to you all day long and, and never get enough with Mary Cutter. Um, I, I want to just throw out like one little last question, if that's okay, because go for um, it. before we sing, so I, are you saying, um, my question is, um, you know, I, I want to know, um, I don't know if you're a, a dream boardy person or whatever, but like the Mary, like, five years from now, what do you think you'll be the most proud of, of yourself? Ooh. Oh <laughs> man, you know what? Like that's such a, and I do love vision boards and dreaming. And actually like every two weeks or so, I try to go out on a coffee date or even just drink coffee and have some alone time just to dream. And that might mm. sound super extra, no. but I do it too. <laughs> do you really? Me I too. love that. I can Me see too. that. I love mm -hmm. that, Will. Well, there's something about we all dog paddle and work really hard, but you have to almost stop sometimes and make sure, well, where am I dog paddling to? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Am I going the right direction? You know, or do I want to go a little bit more left, you know? Recenter. Uh, absolutely, recenter, yes. And, you know, I really am loving, you know, writing for other artists as well as preparing to release stuff for myself as an artist. And I look at artists, writers like Ryan Tedder. I think he has done a fabulous job really balancing both of those things. I think in the country world, Ryan Hurd, Hardy, they slay that as well. And that's something I really, you know, want to be working towards and, uh, and just write music that makes people feel something, whether that's like a lifey thing or just feel good. Well, you're doing it right now. And would you do us the honor of playing us Anything that you want, because we're going to love it. Um, let us know what the name is too before you play it. But 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 thank you for being here and thank you for blessing us with you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Reese. And thank you so much, Will, for having me. You guys are incredible. Dot com, like seriously. Um, I am going to play a little piece of a song that is not out in the world yet. So it's like a sneak peek of this song called Jack to Forget. It's a little bit oh. sassafras. But we like a little bit of sassy now and then, sprinkled in some paprika, but this is how it goes. <laughs> you said you didn't feel like going out tonight. That's fine. You've been working overtime. I just got a call from my friends who said they saw it just now. Arms around some other girl making out. They watch it go down like a bombshell bottle in a college town. I freak out, but you ain't worth crying about. I gave you one too many shots for you to do me like that. But I gave up on holding grudges, so I folded this glass. Don't want your weak apologies about things right to regret. You got Jesus to forgive you at night. I got Jack to forget. Oh. <laughs> Mary Cutter, you are absolutely incredible. Risa Binder, thank you so much for being my better half on another edition of Talent Talk. Mary Cutter, you're, you're the best. Thank you all so you much. What best. a party. <laughs>